Okay, so this a a great book, yeah? An undervalued book, as far as I'm concerned, in the Pan-African movement. Um, Black Africa, the Economic and Cultural Basis for a Federated State, yeah, by Sheikh Anta Diop. Um, he's explaining now, this book here is really outlining a plan, a program, philosophy, strategies, and methodologies um, for achieving African liberation orientated unity on the African continent. Um, and so he addresses the issue of language uh, in that context. And he says, the influence of language is so great that various European mother countries feel that they can afford to withdraw politically from Africa without great loss, as long as their linguistic presence remains in their economic, spiritual, and cultural spheres. Hmm. Again, that relates to what Ngugi was just saying a while ago, yeah? And what this European were trying to inf um, in, in, impose on uh, Baba uh, Ngugi, all right? In terms of the fact that, you know, now we own English, yeah? And so they, they, they're gone, politically speaking, but their cultural presence remains. So we're now trying to keep continuing to recreate ourselves in their image and thereby continuing to empower them. Mm. Linguistic unity based on a foreign language However one may look at it is cultural abortion. It would Im irredeemably eventuate in the death of the authentic national culture, the end of our deeper intellectual and spiritual life and reduce us to perpetual copycats having missed out on our historical mission in this world, yeah? So again, we're seeing how the importance of language, the culture, the imposition of the of the alien culture, which is oppressive to us, yeah, aborts our ability to be able to create for ourselves in our own image, based upon our own principles, based upon our own values. I encourage everybody to read this book. It's very, very small and short book, but very, very packed with powerful um, information. So we can see examples of exactly what um, Baba Sheikh Anthony Up has just said in today with how yeah, the, the, the relationship between the Chinese incursion on the African continent and how the Chinese language is developing on the African continent. Now we're going into more talk about the economic realities. Yeah, remember the presentation is called Towards African Liberation, Revolutionary Culture and Economics in Action. Culture has a direct influence. There are direct implications in the economic sphere depending on the cultural framework we are operating in. So China is looking, yeah, to have greater influence on the African continent. China brings its culture to the African continent. And here's an example of why this um, article um, was published um, by, uh, by Bloomberg, yeah, which is an, an economics publication uh, based in America. And it's entitled, Nigeria Sells Yuan, um, for the first time as it deepens ties with China, yeah? This is all about how basically um, the Chinese are going to be coming in and, and they're going to be exchanging with Nigeria, not using the Naira, but using Yuan, yeah? Central Bank of Nigeria sold when uh, for the first time as it looks to boost com commerce uh, between China and Africa's biggest oil producer and reduce the dominance of the dollar as a trading Currency, yeah. So obviously, this is published by Bloomberg in America because they're concerned that the the, the rise of China is going to have a, a negative impact upon their uh, influence in Africa. All right. The article goes on dollar dominance, yeah, under the heading dollar dominance. Despite Africa's growing trade links with China, the dollar and the euro dominate as trading currencies on the continent, according to a June report from SWIFT, uh, a Belgium-based interbank messaging system. Sorry, um, according to a June report from SWIFT, a Belgian-based interbank messaging system used to move money around the world. Yeah, so look at this now, yeah. The dollar is a primary currency, yeah. Um, this Belgian-based interbank, yeah, is, is the mechanism for moving this currency um, around the world. Afri there's nothing, so none of this has been controlled by Africa or Africans. The dollar was used for 45% of cross-border commercial payments in 2017, the euro for 29% and the renminbi for just 0.1%, Swift said. And the renminbi is just another name for the Chinese currency. China is Nigeria's biggest trading partner after the US, 
We have volumes between the two totaling 2.9 billion in 2017. According to data compiled by Bloomberg, Nigeria runs a deficit importing 7.6 billion of goods, including textiles and machinery from China and exporting just 1.6 billion, mainly oil and gas. Yeah, so this is not an equal relationship. Yeah, China is coming into Africa and exporting raw materials for energy. Yes, and the creation of products, manufacturing products that it is selling back to Nigeria. Yeah, so basically what this is out outlining in layman's terms is that Nigeria, China, sorry, has much more to benefit from its relationship with Nigeria than Nigeria has to benefit from its relationship with China, as the current uh, indicators suggest. But this is matched, yeah? The economic rise of China in Africa is matched by the cultural rise of the Chinese language being taught in African educational institutions. This article, um, China, China's language and cultural centers are growing faster across Africa than we thought, all right? Um, another article, um, how Mandarin is conquering Africa via Confucius Institutes and giving China a soft power advantage. Soft power is not really soft power. Soft power, yeah, so they have soft power, which is basically, they call it culture, and hard power is military, yeah? In effect, what they call soft power is the hardest kind of power. It's the most longest lasting kind of power, if we take into consideration what um, Amir Cabral said earlier, all right? Already, Africa's most important economic partner, China, is also leaving a cultural footprint across the African continent with more than 50 Confucius Institutes teaching Mandarin to students eager to get jobs at Chinese companies, yeah? Now think about this, all right? Um, by the way, this is, a, this is a, an example, yeah, um, of the, the, the one, one Chinese um, training institute, all right? The best Chinese learning institute in Nigeria, what is it? The best what? Chinese Learning Institute um, in Nigeria. Now bear in mind, kings and queens, yeah, that African languages are not the primary Af language of instruction in any African country. Yes, but institutions are being built. Yeah, Confucius is an ancestor that unites the Chinese people, okay? So they're building institutions in the names of their ancestors to exert and spread their cultural influence on the African continent. When we, yeah, who often run away from our ancestors, are not using our languages to teach maths and science and technology and these disciplines right here. So what's the influence of this? What Ngugi was saying before, if the African writing in English contributes to the development of the English language, and English culture, what does teaching, learning, yeah, and practicing fields of human endeavor such as science and technology do for those people whose language in which those endeavors are operating? If we're teach, if we're practicing science and technology in Chinese languages, Mandarin, what does that do for Chinese culture? and Chinese people and Chinese economic development. Consequently, what does it do for African culture and African people and African cultural development? These are the questions that we have to ask, okay?